We recently went to Colorado's Rocky Mountains for a look at an innovative art exhibit. It uses multimedia collaborations between artists and farmers to explore the similarities between the two fields. Our report is part of our arts and culture series, Canvas. A vegetable from a small organic farm in the Rockies becomes an Asian dish cooked on a food cart in a museum gallery. Hundreds of dried corn stalks fill a wall at another Boulder County Museum. And a series of embroidery panels with images of wildflowers hang in a 140-year-old barn. They're all part of a multi-venue exhibition called Agriculture, Art Inspired by the Land. More than 15 local and national artists and collectives teamed with Boulder County farmers to create the works now on display at two museums and three local farms. Organizers say the goal was to explore our relationship with nature. It's not a typical art show. It's not a typical gallery experience. Jamie Kopke coordinates it all as lead curator. It allowed us to explore a topic which I think is just so vital to all of us in these times and that's, that's how people are connecting or being disconnected from the natural world around us. The disconnection from nature has created a whole host of problems in our lives. Every season's a new opportunity to have another relationship with a plant. So, um, yeah. here we are. I know, here we yeah. are, like months later. Yeah. From the little seedlings to right? this lush field. <laughs> Artist Yumi Janera Roth and organic farmer Mark Darris Penis teamed up to grow Kang Kong, a vegetable sometimes called water spinach. While not well known in the United States, it's a staple in Asian countries like the Philippines, where Janera Roth's mother was born. The plants she grew up with and the plants that she had access to in the U.S., she had to do a lot of food substitutions. So Kong Kong was one of these things that was really interesting to me because I would eat the foods, but I would eat it without the sort of this core vegetable mm. that was in it. In the United States, it's considered an invasive weed, and I was interested in this idea of it like as something invasive or illegal, and, a t and you, when you attach that to a plant, and then what happens when it's actually the core of somebody else's diet. Having this opportunity to give people this meaningful connection with a plant, not a product, not something you buy in the store, but with a plant that you can watch grow from a seed and bring it to harvest and then bring it into your kitchen and then feed yourselves and your community with. This was just a great opportunity to sort of almost use different language to think about farming as well. Experimental has been... Jane cool. Burke of the Boulder like Museum of Contemporary Art is another of the project's three curators. She says the collaborative nature of the project cultivated the artist's creativity. This has challenged their work. It has made them kind of think outside of their normal practice by incorporating really these philosophies of, of the farmers. For me personally, it's really inspired me to look at farmers in a different way and to really see them as these interdisciplinary practitioners in the same way that we kind of see artists. This piece here is by artist Patrick Merrill. He really wanted to cover scale and like what it takes to feed the masses. Jared Thompson, curator at the Longmont Museum, explains the meaning behind the array of dried corn stalks. He was trying to show how much corn it takes to feed cattle to produce milk. So this screen represents how much corn food energy a cow would eat to produce about three gallons of milk. So that would supply an average American about two months. This piece is actually put together with toothpicks. When the show comes down, he's actually gonna return it to the field and it's all biodegradable, so it can go back into the field, put nutrients back into the soil. From actual nutrients to whimsical inflated depictions of them. This is by artist Nicole Banowitz. She created a fictional futuristic machine that actually adds microbes and oxygen to the soil. So the white part of this sculpture represents the machine. The gold parts represent the microbes and the worms that are being added. This would be the microbe that goes into the soil yeah. to help yep. give nutrients and, and, and help things grow. Yeah, she's giving visual form to these tiny creatures that you cannot see with a naked eye. Canadian artist Amanda McCaver's ethereal hanging panels use digitally scanned images of prairie wildflowers and grasses. She'll print them into these larger than life pieces that we see and then she presses them onto the fabric almost like you would find a specimen pressed in an herbarium. Hanging in the drafty old barn they wave in the summer breeze like flowers in a field. She really loved that about the place. She loved that there were birds in here and that 
when you walk into this space, it's actually a very sensory experience. It sort of feels like you're out in the field where these, where these uh, plants are growing. Exactly, and she hung them in this space to create kind of this larger than life monumental feel to the plants, but also the fabric itself is also representing the, the delicacy of the ecosystem in which all of these plants interact and live. At the organic farm, Yumi Genera Roth and Mark Darris Penis harvested and washed Kang Kong to go to the Boulder Museum of Contemporary Art to be the main ingredient in a traditional Philippine dish cooked by Yumi's mom, Shirley Genera Roth. What cooking means to yes. me is the world. <laughs> I love to cook. She indulged in some of that love, taking the food cart her daughter created for its maiden run. Adobo is uh, one of the Philippine uh, main course that we always, you know, we do it every day and, and we serve to our guests. So Yumi, yes. tell me about, this is your exhibit, this is your, your piece of art. It's the totalizing thing is the piece of art to working with Mark, working with my mom. This is sort of just a kind of a, a, an object that functions as a vehicle to bring all these different components together. So this object is actually modeled after food carts that you see throughout Manila. The imagery is actually all derived from the image of Kang Kong. She says the cart's decorations upend 19th century artist James McNeil Whistler's famous bit of cultural appropriation. The color scheme and, and the sort of the, the, the carving is all inspired by the Peacock Room at the Freer Art Gallery. That was an Englishman and expat American's idea of what Asia sort of meant to non-Asians. And this is sort of playing that, that language back, but sort of representing it for I guess, Asian and Asian American audiences. From farm to table, this collaboration between farmer and artist infused the art with meaning as well as flavor. You knew it as a plant, but not right. necessarily its role. I had never eaten it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, how do each of you feel learning each oh. other's world? <laughs> I mean, synergy. amazing. I mean, that's, I think that's been really amazing. My mom has cooked side by side the store bought stuff and Mark's Gong Gong. When, when she tried Mark's Gong Gong, she's like, this is better than the stuff I grew up with. <laughs> and Mark, for you, that learning what it means to, you know, Yumi's mother, does that deepen your, your feel for the plant or your, your relationship to the plant? Absolutely, 100%. I mean, we're, we're, we're dimensionalizing our, our relationships and that, that, that narrative, that connection, that, that personalization, that's what drives me to, to continue and deepen the relationship further and further. From seedling to plant to artist creation, fueled by collaboration and nature.